Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. For eight years, Novella Carpenter farmed a lot on 28th Street in Oakland, California. Then one day, the city planner showed up. What happened? We'll find out at the end of this video. But first, if you are engaged in backyard farming or homesteading, you should consider raising rabbits. They are an economical and healthy source of meat. And in today's video, we have the top things you should know. Number one, what is rabbit farming? Rabbit farming, also known as cuniculture, is the agricultural practice of breeding and raising domestic rabbits for their meat, fur, or wool. Number two, what are the health benefits of rabbit meat? Rabbit meat has a high percentage of easily digestible protein. It also contains a low amount of fat compared to other available meats. In addition, rabbit meat has less cholesterol and less sodium compared to other meats and has a high ratio of meat to bone, which means there is more edible meat on the carcass than other animals. Finally, because rabbit meat has less fat, it is a lower calorie meat source. Number three, what are the advantages of rabbit farming? As a source of income, rabbits have a few advantages. They are a fast growing animal, reaching reproductive age within a few months, and a single female rabbit can produce two to eight kits per litter, as well as several litters per year. Rabbits also convert food to edible meat efficiently and at a higher rate than most other animals. In addition, compared to other animals, rabbits have a low production cost. They are also not labor intensive, require relatively little capital, and have low space demands. So they can meet your family's nutritional needs, even if you only have a few square feet to spare. Number four, what supplies do you need to start rabbit farming? Rabbits don't need too much, but you still need to give them a comfortable place to live and a healthy diet. To start out, you will need a place to house your rabbits, such as a shed or a cage, which provides adequate space. You'll need a few rabbits to start with, and this can be as few as three, one buck and two does. Your rabbit's living space will need water bottles, pellet feeders, and hay holders, as well as rest pads, nesting boxes, and chew toys. Number five, what are the steps to starting a rabbit farm? The first and most important step is to check the zoning and building regulations to ensure that you are legally able to raise rabbits. You can then start to plan your herd. You'll need to apply for all required permits, including business permits if you plan to sell rabbits or rabbit products. With permits in hand, you can create your hutch and run and set up a healthy and comfortable living space for your animals. You can then purchase your rabbits, after which you'll need to set a regular cleaning and feeding schedule and determine when and how you plan to harvest the animals. But now that we've covered the basics of rabbit farming, let's return to Novella Carpenter. In 2003, Novella began farming on an empty lot in Ghost Town, Oakland. For eight years, she grew lettuce and chard, cilantro and basil. She then added rabbits to her farm. One evening in 2011, Novella sold a few homemade rabbit pies at a fundraising event for her farm. It seems these pies horrified at least one individual who reported her to the city. A few weeks later, a city planner showed up to inspect Novella's farm. Unfortunately, Novella was in trouble, for it was against the Oakland Zoning Code to raise livestock on a residential lot, which is not, in fact, so unusual. And there are good reasons for these zoning regulations. Animals, and especially their slaughter, are a public health concern. When they are not raised or butchered correctly, they can cause disease and contamination. And then there is the question of animal welfare. Novella raises and slaughters her rabbits humanely, but there are others who do not. In fact, a few months before the city inspector showed up, Oakland animal officials raided a house in the Lake Merritt area and seized 21 malnourished rabbits. The owner had kept the animals stacked on top of each other in two small cages. Because of their diet and living conditions, the rabbits entered the animal shelter with malformed bones, burns, and bloated bellies. Of course, Novella's outdoor rabbit pen is a far cry from such dramatic examples, 
But the Oakland City Rabbit Wars is a good example of the thorny issues that something as simple as raising your own food can engender. Which is why, if you plan to start a rabbit farm, it's vital that you comply with all building and zoning regulations and raise the animals humanely. But what happened to Novella? It turns out that she is able to raise rabbits as long as she obtains a conditional use permit. And within a few weeks of posting the issue on her blog, she had raised the 2500 she needed to acquire this permit. It seems her neighbors love her, rabbits and all. But what do you think? Do you have any stories about rabbit farming or homesteading? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening, and more to come.